Okay, guys, yesterday we talked uh, about equilibrium, and equilibrium is the idea that the sum of the forces on any object is equal to zero, um, which means if you have no net force that you're not going to accelerate because Newton's second law says F equals MA, no force, no acceleration, okay? This problem here is kind of a little bit of a combination of what we've been doing in um, friction and kind of an equilibrium example as well. So if we look at this, guys, it says determine the coefficient of static friction between the block and the ramp. If the mass is added to the right side, right here, we're going to add mass here, um, and the block begins to slide at 75 kilograms, okay? So if we had 50 kilograms here, it would just stay stationary. 60 kilograms, 70, and we get to 75 kilograms, this thing finally starts to slide like that. Does that make sense? Okay. This right here, just to make sure everybody's on the same page, is a pulley. Okay, so it's going to allow the string to to um, to um, roll, and these things will slide like that. Those two blocks. <coughs> now, one of the things that we're going to do in physics is we're always going to, at least in now in this class, we're going to treat the string or the connecting device as being massless. Okay. Because if you don't do that, the problem becomes a little bit more complicated. Because as you pull this way, more of the string is going to be over on this side, which is going to increase the uh, mass. And then since the mass is bigger, it's going to pull harder. And that actually becomes a pretty complex problem because um, that string is going to be changing um, and getting big, uh, the mass is going to be getting bigger, and um, for right now we don't want to really deal with that. We're just going to deal with the masses, okay? So if we look here, guys, I think we'd all agree, and we're getting pretty good at this. If this is 100 kilograms, we know it's going to weigh 980 newtons, okay? That should be really straightforward. If this is 35, we know that angle is 35, which then makes this component, the cosine of 35, times our weight, 980 which gives us 802.769 newtons. Here, this is the component of the weight that's pulling the mass down the ramp. Okay, and it's equal to sine 35 times 980. And just to review, this is the component of the object's mass that is pushing it against the ramp. Okay, and we know from Newton's third law, when it pushes against the ramp, the ramp has to push back and those are going to be equal and opposite, okay? So we can say that the normal force exerted on the block by the ramp is equal to 802.769 newtons, which is equal to this component, okay? And we've done that enough times, that should be pretty solid review in your brain, okay? Now, when we, when we look at this thing and we try to figure out if, what the coefficient of static friction is, we kind of have to look at all the forces. So let's look at a free body diagram of all the forces. Okay, if we were to look at this, I think you guys would agree, we have the component pushing in the ramp, we have the normal force pushing up, we have the component, this component here, um, pulling it down the ramp, and then is this block, which weighs 735 newtons, it's pulling down this way, but when it goes over the pulley, if we assume this is a frictionless pulley, is it also going to be pulling up that direction with 735 newtons? Can you guys see that? Okay. So you'll notice I put 735 newtons right there. Okay. And then, because we're trying to get it to move that way, which way is friction going to pull? And this is pretty important. You guys see this. Friction's going to pull this way, isn't it? Okay? And so, you'll see in my drawing, I put force of static friction max, pulling back in that direction. Okay? Now, if we were, and this could happen, if we were pulling the block down the ramp, instead of pulling it up the ramp, then this would help us pull down and the force of static friction would flip the other direction because static friction is always going to act opposite the direction that you're trying to pull. Does that make sense? Okay. And that's something we'll see some problems that we'll work with on that. So if I look here, guys, using if before, right before this thing moves, it's going to be in equilibrium. When we, right as we reach force of static max, 
that's when the thing is just everything's in equilibrium. And so if we look here, I sum the forces in the x direction. And this is kind of interesting, guys. I want to show you this. You can make any direction the x and y direction as long as you stick with those conventions. And so on a lot of these ramp problems, you'll notice right here, what I did is I made that the positive x, and I made that the positive y. Okay, now a lot of kids ask me, why would you do that? Well, guys, it's pretty cool. If I make that the positive x, are all these things acting linearly? And then I don't have to deal with as many um, angles, if you will. Okay, and then you'll notice that this is a positive y, and really this don't matter because do those two cancel each other out? They're not going to um, add to the movement really at all. Okay, except for the fact that that's going to increase our, our friction. So once we get to that point, guys, I can say the sum of the forces in the x equals zero. So basically, we're going to take this one in the positive direction minus that one. And then you'll notice I put plus Fs max because sometimes you don't know the direction. So if you put plus there, it's going to give you, you'll notice we came out with a negative. That negative is going to tell you what? That it's acting in the negative direction. Okay. And so if you look at it, basically what it's telling you, if we subtract that, this from that, and then we say plus Fs max, we're going to take um, this over there and we'll get negative 172. It's telling you that that force is pointing in the negative direction. Okay? So what that tells us is at that point the force of static friction has to be 172.895. Okay? Then, it's pretty simple um, step from there, um, we just say force of static max equals mu s times Fn. Okay. And we plug in our, um, the magnitude of our static friction force. Okay. We know the normal force because we've calculated that already. And when we divide that over there, we get a coefficient of static friction of 0 0.21537. Okay. So what does that basically tell us? We could set this, if we wanted to know this um, coefficient of friction, between the static, between this and that surface, we could set this up, keep adding mass until we get to the point where it breaks over and we could calculate the coefficient of static friction between the block and the ramp. Okay? Now just to throw this, because we've talked about it in other ways, remember how we talked about it the other day where we would, if we were on a horizontal surface, we could pull with a certain force of static max and as soon as we broke over that friction, we would know the normal force. And so we could say mu static equals, um, well, let's, let's start over. Let's say force of static max equals mu s fn, right? So mu s would equal fs max divided by fn. That was one way that we figured out the coefficient of static friction, right? You guys remember this? And then we also did the one where we had the block on a ramp. And then we started lifting the ramp up. And we lifted the ramp up until this thing started to slide. And we, we derived that. And remember we came up with the mu coefficient of static friction was equal to the tangent of the theta when that thing started to slide. Okay. So just to review, we found coefficient of static friction in this manner, coefficient of static friction in that manner. We could also determine coefficient of static friction using a tool like this.